Boys, where have you been? <laughs> We're just running errands. That's it. Splinter is gay. Why is that a lie? Or maybe he isn't. Anyway. That's what we're going to find out. As usual, welcome soldiers, old and new. I am your commander, Ergo, also known as First on, last on. Take it today, we'll be serving rounds of five, five, six. And I am delighted and honored to have you aboard our platoon of reason and common sense. We journey to stand against the rising tide of wokeness and agenda-driven narratives in our media and games. So before we get started, I'd like to make a quick acknowledgement about my previous video in regards to Tanya and Melina's quote-unquote relationship and portraying it as if it was breaking news. You awesome soldiers rightfully pointed out that it was dishonest of me to present information in the way that I did because it simply fit my narrative at the time. And for that, I do apologize. So there's a really interesting story behind this latest controversy surrounding a cockroach <laughs> that will be in the film and on Scumbug's poster, it was narrated starring as himself. But then eagle-eyed fans after watching the movie pointed out that Throughout the movie, there are times when the character of Scumbug is referred to with the female pronoun, which is her, thus making Splinter not gay. A deep sip from a very tall glass of I told you so. But to Price of Reason's defense, he admits that he wasn't watching the movie with a 10,000% Scumbug was listed as a he. So then... Well, the director of the movie, Jeff Rowe, provided a statement and I quote, That was a marketing mistake and we were furious about it. They put that out. I don't know who did that or how that happened, but we were immediately like, That's not true. Don't put that in the world. And that will now be on the internet forever. But that was never the intention. That was never the character. We always imagined her to be a female cockroach, and that one poster was a slip-up." Don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. I see through the lies of the Jedi. As of this briefing, Scumbug's posters have been deleted and pulled from Paramount's official Twitter account and anywhere else they may crop up. An article by Bounding Into Comics about the situation asks some very good questions such as, if what Rose said is true, why was the poster up for over a month before it was deleted? Why was the poster only deleted after Price of Reason, Bounding Into Comics and others started reporting they made Splinter gay? And if he and Paramount always imagined Scumbug as a female, why has the character always been depicted as male in nearly every iteration of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before this one. Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. Drop it, hell? I want to hear about this, homie. I said forget about it, cuz. Now, making a mistake is something that anybody could do. Believe me, I would know. But Price of Reason theorizes that it's hard to believe that a major studio that's invested $80 million in producing the movie and another $40 million in marketing it just mistakenly misgenders their characters on official posters. Also, that with $120 million on the line, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles posters had to get approval from several top studio executives before releasing the posters. Now guys, like I said before, mistakes do happen, even to billion dollar corporations. I'm only human after all. It's simply I am so happy and have a grin on my face that stretches from ear to ear due to this controversy. And why you ought to be smiling too. <laughs> is that not only does it encourage us, but also reminds us that the consumers are the ultimate shareholder at the end of the day. So if we truly are sick and tired of the sorry state of modern entertainment and video games today, and yeah, I'm looking at you, Naughty Dog, Xbox, and you too, Capcom. I know a lot about you as well, you mad rat. I know a lot about you as well. We need to fund 
the sorry state of modern entertainment today that we detest. The Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Just imagine, a company invests millions of money into a certain game. They work as hard as they can, pulling crunch. They also inject their politics into this game. And when it's time to release that product, they are dollars they were anticipating is extremely below expectations. Where is it? Where's the rest? The money, Skylar, where is the rest? Skylar. Where is the video game industry needs a wake-up call. They need a Bud Light situation. Just one. Imagine if it was GTA 6 and it was pushing LGTV as hard as it could and nobody bought GTA 6. Impossible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Hey, you I'd like to take this opportunity to appreciate and thank you fine outstanding soldiers of reason and common sense. Thanks to you, we are now 110 members strong. And with your continued support, we will see our platoon grow into the tens of thousands. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. What do you think will be going through executives' minds? And when they investigate, they come to find out that gamers are simply tired. They're tired of complaining about one and the same thing. They're tired of politics. They're tired of being talked down to. I'm tired, Trinity. I'm tired of this war. I'm tired of fighting, I'm tired of this ship. And they have decided to simply take a stand. That would be an incredible wake up call to companies. It would send a powerful message. Man, I miss the days when entertainment was simply entertainment. Whether you're watching movies or playing video games, it was all fun and satisfying. Nobody was talking down to you. Nobody was trying to virtue signal. No one was calling their fans racists because their movie flopped or their game flopped back in those days. Back in the PS2 era, it was simply entertainment galore. We had Need for Speed. EA was on fire. EA Games. They were, they were at the zenith of entertainment. God of War was epic. Gran Turismo 4, San Andreas, everything was just fun. For many of us, that was our childhood. And today, you can't play a certain video game because if you play it, you're afraid that you're gonna be called transphobic or some other nonsense that's made up. Like, we're, I'm barely into the second combat here. And every time I look at chat, it's just, the conversation is just like, Maybe we can do like bothering a me. Right back. Like, a, like, a, like a little break or something? You can take a break if you want. I'll just stop talking and I'll just go fight and do the combat. The only reason why I, I'm not playing this game, and I know a bunch of other people are not playing this game, is because we know that it's not worth it to get fucking bullied endlessly and called transphobic endlessly. And if you buy the Hogwarts Legacy game, you are contributing to transphobia, even if you consider yourself an ally, even if you yourself are trans. I can't watch anymore. This is the age of activism, soldiers, for better or for worse. And unless something changes, nothing will change. If you made it to the end of this briefing, congratulations. Well done. As usual, I thank you for listening. And most importantly, I thank you for your time. Good day, soldiers. I... I'm Optimus Prime, and I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are waiting.